Hey y'all, welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host, Heather McFadden, and this is the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode number 466, I get to welcome to the show, Rebecca St. James. And my mom said something strategic a couple years ago. She said, if you and Cubby are being faithful to what God's having you do, then there's blessing on your kids. There's a blessing on them as well in your faithfulness. And that really resonated with me because healthy yeses that are being led by the Holy Spirit for us as husbands and wives are also a gift to our children because they see us like honoring Jesus first. Oh, that's right. That's right. Where are my CCM people at? If you listen to Christian contemporary music in the 1990s, then you are very familiar with my guest today. Rebecca is also the oldest child in the very well-known family, the Small Bones. Her mom, Helen, has been on the show two times before, and her brothers, Joel and Luke, who also have their own little band you might have heard of for King and Country, actually were on an Israel trip with me, and so I had... Luke's wife, Courtney, on the show, and we've linked to all those episodes in the show notes. But today, it's all about Rebecca, because her journey into stardom is one of the many stories in the new movie, Unsung Hero. It is the true story of the Smallbone family's journey from Australia to America, and how they survived, how they made adventure out of their suffering and how they came together in it. So in this episode, we're talking through what was actually true in the story, uh, what wasn't, and even Rebecca's journey into motherhood, which required a lot of waiting on her part. We talk about what from her family of origin she's implemented into her new family, and how do you live a life of adventure as a family, unique from everyone else, taking your gifts your interests, where you are, and thriving in those. So I hope it's an inspiration to you, especially as we head into Mother's Day this coming Sunday. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Rebecca. Hi. Welcome to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. Thank you. Oh my gosh. If my high school, college self could see this happening now. (laughs) And for all the other mid-40 women who are listening, Uh thank you for your work. Thank you for putting beautiful music out there. You're so sweet. Especially for someone who was only allowed to listen to CCM, okay? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you for putting high-quality music out there. (laughs) Oh, I appreciate that. Yes. Okay. And now your journey is in the public eye. Mm -hmm. The movie has been out there. People are consuming it. I'm sure one of the first questions you're going to get, or maybe you've already gotten is how much of this was actually true? Mm, Remarkably, almost all of it. Some of the film has been, you know, some, some added drama, some added maybe exaggeration, but all the, all the high points are are true from, um, you know, us not having any furniture in our house and not having a car for a little while and, you know, raking people's lawns and mowing and, cleaning houses and babysitting to survive. And um, my grandfather passing away in in the middle of dad, you know, not having a job and us being on the other side of the world. I mean, so much of it is true. And I think when I watch the film now, I'm like, oh my goodness, I know the story back to front. I've told it, you know, for for decades in my show to, to really focus on God's faithfulness. But I'm like, wow, like, where does it bottom out? Like, I'm like, oh, there's still a lower low that's coming. You know, I mean, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, um, but it but it really is. You know, you were praying right before before we started this this time together, Heather, and you just talked about God's faithfulness. Lord, thank you for being faithful in our lowest of lows, and that is true for all of us. And I think the, the film really, really lets that be known in a fresh way. And so I'm I'm so thankful for that. That it's true. Mm. That it's true. It's true for the small bone family, but this tells us more about who God is. Yes. Y'all just tested it to the limits, okay? (laughs) True. And honestly, it's the highlighting of your parents Mm. and I think the unsung hero being your mom supporting your dad. But I just felt so much empathy for your dad in it. Did it give you new eyes to see your dad? 
Yeah, I, you know, it's it's funny because we only found out recently that Dad actually never read the script before what? it was all like before he even watched it. Like we had a family viewing of the movie when it was still somewhat editable, but it was you know really far down the track, and he had never read the script. So yeah, it, it's it's a really really vulnerable film for him and. And it paints him too as being pretty demonstrative on the outside of what he was going through internally. But that part isn't probably exactly historically accurate because it was more, he he was internalizing all this anger and fear and, you know, so much pain, but it wasn't as much on the outside. Like you, you couldn't have seen it, but in the film you see it. Yeah. And I think that their generation, that was probably true. Like Yes. And I think even men now are just starting to learn how to label, oh, my anger is actually, I'm afraid. And yes, or I'm sad. Yeah. The yeah. anger is a cover for deep, deep sadness and grief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I, I think that a lot of men are actually going to, they're going to get dragged into the film by their wives. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're going to feel like, oh my goodness, I get this pressure. Yes. To provide for the family. I get this shame of, I have disappointed my family. Hmm. And the choices I've made in not being successful in what I thought I was successful in. Hmm. I was curious for your part in real life, how much pressure did you feel to provide for the family with the circumstances being dire? Did you feel that pressure as a young girl or were you more interested in using your gift? And Yeah, probably the latter. You know, I surrendered my gifts to God at 12 and hmm. he started pretty clearly leading me into music immediately after that, like at 13. And I did my first tour opening for Carmen at 13 and then um, recorded an album in Australia before we even came over here. So he he was doing it already and leading my life. And so I think all of us in the family at that point were pitching in. So we were, I was babysitting and cleaning houses. My mom was helping me with the cleaning a lot. And then um, my siblings were mowing yards and raking lawns and all of that. So, but we were all, we were all pitching in. So I think for me, I just felt like I'm doing my part. I'm just doing kind of my part. And so then it became doing auditions and, um, you know, record label execs would come to local things that I was doing, leading worship at our church or or things like that. And so that's kind of how I got signed. But I think I was pretty clueless, honestly, Heather, to all of the, you know, the ins and outs of kind of what was happening. I think I felt more pressure later on, to be honest, about carrying the family because my family did end up kind of being a part of what I was doing. And so it was all like, I I need to keep keep this up because everybody kind of has jobs based on what I'm doing. So I think I felt that more later on, but not at this, you know, very, very young point. I was 15, 16. And I didn't feel it at that time. It was an, it was an adventure. And my parents really showed that. And the film shows that. And I'm, I'm proud of them for, you know, being at that rock bottom point and letting us know kind of, yeah, the things are really rough and we don't have a car and we don't know where the income is going to come from and we're low on food, but we're going to pray. I'm a, I'm a mom of three, 10 and under, and I'm just amazed at how vulnerable they were. Yeah. I mean, and then we were able to see God show up because we knew the need. Yeah. I think parents often wonder, do I, how much do I let my kids in on our struggle? Yeah. Am yeah. I protect, is it like bad to include them? And from your experience. It was age appropriate. I feel that. Yeah. I, I, I think they weren't dumping things on us. Like you've got to fix this or, you know, but more like we're trusting God. We're going to him about it. And we all have a little part to play and, God's going to work it out on our part. Like I really saw faith and we weren't scared. We didn't see fear on them. And so, and they were one in it. Like, you know, their marriage was tested for sure, but they, they were really clinging to God and each other in it. And that was powerful too. And we see in the film, a couple of spiritual disciplines, which I think is great to kind of model for people like sitting and praying together, worship, like that every meal, there was a little song. And I don't know how, again, and then the gratitude wall, like this is what we're praying for. This is the answers to prayer, which I think it's helpful for families just to see played out that they could do that. It's not complex. How many of those have you experienced and what have you brought into your own family Hmm. that you 
appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those disciplines were all very true. I mean, it shows us going to church together as a family. It shows us like interrupting the row, the aisle. Of that was because it was so eight real. of us. Yeah. And then my sister came along. So nine of us and we were late for church every time. And so that was so true of like, oh, everybody sees the small bones coming into church. Especially yeah. a small church where you're known. Right. It's very we go to a bigger church at that point, but we still close the scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then yeah, we prayed together as a family. We didn't actually have the prayer wall. I mean, it's really <clears throat> beautiful what Focus on the Family has done because they've actually provided a product where um, I think you can order it online, probably through Focus on the Family's website, but it's like a prayer and thanks kind of wall where you can kind of put post-it notes on, you know, of, of what you're praying for and what God has provided. And so we more just did it you know, sitting on the floor as a family and, and praying. But I love that in the movie it shows that. And then people can kind of access that. Families can access that. Uh, so what we're doing really, I think, with our kids of, of those disciplines is we, we are letting them know, again, age appropriate, like vulnerabilities that we have. I don't think that whole stoic thing of we've got it all worked out. You know, yeah. we've, we've, we've got life so dialed. I don't think that that's the path that we want to take as, as parents or that my husband and I want to. So even like I've asked our 10 year old to pray for me sometimes when I'm going into some kind of ministry event and I might be a little, you know, edgy about it. Or I, I mean, I pray before every, every ministry event or most things. So they see that, but I'll even say, Hey, I'm, I'm not feeling like super confident tonight. Or like, can you just pray that, you know, God empowers mommy. And it's really sweet. Like she'll just say, well, Jesus, I just ask that you give mommy confidence and strength and help her to do, you know, her, her best and like, and, and go for it tonight. I mean, it's just in this 10 year old language, yeah. she's coming to God on my behalf. And, mm -hmm. and then when some of our bigger decisions, like, will we move? Will we do this? Will we do that? We're like inviting them into that. Let's pray together guys. Like, and let's see God show up. And they have, it's really beautiful. It's lovely. Y'all heard last week, Cynthia and I talk about mayhem and y'all are living it and we're so grateful that we have things to go to, but I am noticing that I'm putting on a full face of makeup every day. You know, there are no days where I'm just doing a, the lipstick thing or just the mascara thing. I'm doing the full face and I'm super thankful that I have Thrive Cosmetics to turn to that has a full line of makeup that can make me look great, that I know it has clean, skin-loving ingredients that work. It's the unicorn, y'all. They are 100% certified vegan and they are cruelty-free. There are zero parabens, sulfates, phthalates. Not only that, they give back. For every product purchase, Thrive Cosmetics donates products and funds to help communities thrive, whether it's homelessness or women who've survived domestic abuse. So many different communities are supported by your purchase. So let's talk about some of my favorite products. Well, of course, I love their eyebrow liner. I love their eye brightener, their brilliant eye brightener, but I am never going to stop talking about their Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. Because it's even supporting me through all of the uh, crying I'm doing these days with senior year. Uh, their unique formula creates a tube around each eyelash to lengthen them. So it's super easy to remove. It slides right off with warm water and it doesn't leave smudges. And the ingredients in the mascara, they actually nourish and support my eyelashes. So they grow longer and stronger and healthier over time. Refresh your everyday look with Thrive Cosmetics, luxury beauty that gives back. Right now, you can get an exclusive 10% off your order at thrivecosmetics.com slash DMA. That's Thrive Cosmetics. Remember, it's spelled out C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash DMA for 10% off your first order. Okay, so... I get in trouble if I call people young moms, all right? Why? Because they'll say, I had kids later in life and I don't feel young, but I have young kids. And I know that on your journey, you married at what age? 33. 33. Started having kids at 36. Yeah. 
which is not all people, but <laughs> I think women feel more sensitive about that. So mm-hmm. you were a mom in your late thirties with young kids. Yeah. Talk to us about even that journey. Like you were singing all these songs about purity and mm. waiting and marrying and waiting till 33 mm. and then having your kids. I mean, talk to us about that journey for you of like, yeah, waiting. Yeah. The waiting was super hard. Like that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever faced in my life because, um, you know, the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And that was my heart for a long time. And it was to the level where, you know, I have this song about, you know, it's called wait for me where I'm saying to my future husband, wherever he is, I'm waiting for you and I'm praying for you. Wait for me too. I really struggled to sing that song. Like it was almost like I couldn't breathe after a certain amount of years while singing that song, because my heart was so sad about this dream is not being realized. Will it be realized? You know, like there was, it was so public. Yeah. Like, oh, that's, so true. Public. <laughs> that's true too. Like you can't just be struggling on your own. Yeah. No. Gosh, so hard. that that was really, really hard. And then um, I was in LA and through mutual friends and met this holy hunk, <laughs> Cubby, Cubby Fink. And, you know, we started dating, fast and you know he was late 20s me early 30s and um you know within a year god had changed the whole trajectory of my life like it's like i'm single and like sad about it and then a year later i'm married and and living my dreams and then a couple years later i'm having kids and so i still i still pinch myself that god redeemed the years the, the locust had eaten and that verse has been on our fridge you know at significant times in my life because you know, and, and it wasn't easy, like just after getting married either, like we miscarried because I had started later in life, you know, um, multiple times. And so that was difficult too. had kind of secondary infertility. Um, but I'm just, I look at my husband and my kids and I just like, I can get emotional real fast about it because it's like, he restored so much and redeemed so much. And it's a test. That's a testimony in itself of God's goodness and faithfulness. And they say kids raised by people who are older do better. Really? Because you're wiser. Hmm. Your identity is already fixed. You're not trying to hmm. find it in your kids. And so they're, they might be better off. I'm just saying, Rebecca. Oh, thank Saul you. Might have, thank you. I might have. Uh, but yeah, tell us like your mom journey. In the movie, it says, mom, I always wanted to be like you is one of the yeah. lines. Like you're yeah. my hero. Yep. Like how much of that you said, this waiting and this hope deferred, had you always wanted to be a mom and here you were, oh, yeah. this world famous thing. Okay. Because <laughs> I mean, a family of seven, like you being the oldest daughter are kind of mater- like you're kind of put in the role of being mom, I'm sure a lot. I felt before I even started having kids, I felt like I'd already helped yeah. raise the family. hundred percent. Like, uh, like, I was with brothers. Mom. Yeah. I was second mom. My my parents said, you know, we probably wouldn't have had so many kids had you not been so helpful. Like we would yeah. have stopped at four. My dad jokes about, you know, my brothers like because it's for king and country and Joel is number four and Luke is number five. So he's like, it would have just been for king and there would have been no for country, you know, no country. And, for king and, country. and Joel's told me that he and Luke did not get along. Like they fought yeah. the most probably like they're, that. They're, they're kind of yin and yang. So they're just yeah. very different. Yeah. I, so have I think it took a while ways. for them to kind of see, oh yeah, we balance each other out. And this is actually really, really great. It's a fabulous partnership, but it took a while. And the movie even alludes, alludes to that. I mean, the movie's very honest about all the layers of it all. But I, you know, it, I'm just so, so thankful, like, that I am a mom and I can draw from kind of being um, like second mom, <laughs> all that I learned then, because I always had a baby on my hip. I mean, it was just like my whole life, but I always wanted that so badly. Like, like honestly, music was a tied me over until... I got to be married and have a family. Like that was like, and, and I even, I remember thinking, oh, God will probably have me wait till I'm like 28, which at that, that you know, to, to get married, like that, like, I, I, that felt I like a really long time. Mom, but that was like really old, you know, like yeah. 28. Oh gosh, I have to wait that long. And I ended up being 33, you know, like five years beyond that. But I, I just feel so, so thankful because I, I, I got to live my dream. And when I say in the film, I want to be like you, I'm saying 
I want to be a wife and a mom. This is the main dream of my life. Music was secondary to that and is secondary to that. So I'm still doing music, but it family health comes first. And we're not perfect in that. We're still figuring it out, like what are healthy yeses, what are healthy noes. Yeah. But, um, and, and that's every mom, right? Every mom is going, totally. what's healthy yeses, what's healthy noes? How do, how do I guard my heart for out of it flow the wellsprings of life in the hecticness of and the hurry of, of being a mom? You know, how do I have that stillness to fill up so that I not only am not just surviving but thriving in, in these hats that I wear of wife and mom and like, you know, human being that needs some time too to breathe, right? So we're all figuring it out. That's all of us and, and that's me too, for sure. Yeah. No, that's, that's real, real. Yeah. And so when you, you kind of stopped everything and married yep. and had kids, when did you start picking that back up as women who are listening, who have set careers aside and had young kids and then they're considering going back? Like what was that transition like in that decision? Yeah. Um, it was not what I had planned for myself. Uh, when I, retired from music and it was quietly retired, just kind of wound things down, didn't make a song and dance about it. I thought I would possibly never sing again. And I was very at peace about that because I was pretty burnt out at that point. I was like nearly yeah. two decades in and, you know, finally had this dream come true of being married. So it was about a year into our marriage that I stopped and was very, very peaceful and happy about it. And then our daughter was nearly four when I did an event and most things, I mean, I still got offers to do stuff, but I would say no pretty much to everything. And then there was this show in Alaska that my brothers were asked to be a part of and I was asked to be a part of. And so I said yes to that. And it was during worship that God called me back to music very obviously and, and kind of reordered even my history with music at that point, like a lot of the burnout pain fell away. I like saw how he'd been so intimately with me, even when, you know, it felt so hard and challenging at certain points. And I had kind of issues even with my voice from burnout. So he just restored so much. And I felt like when he called me back to music, you know, in that moment, he also just said, just wait and see, just, just watch what I'm about to do. You won't even believe it. It's going to, it's, it's a whole new thing that I'm doing. Don't run ahead of me. I've got this, just, just wait and see what I'm about to do. And I honestly, Heather feel like what he was saying is happening now. And that was six years ago that he started moving me back into music. So sometimes it takes longer than what we think, you know, for the promises that he's put in our heart to happen. A lot of good stuff isn't overnight, you know, but I'm seeing it now and it's a really, really sweet thing. It's a sweet thing to go, okay, this is what you were birthing in my heart. This is what you were speaking. And I see it coming into play now. And I see you redeeming so much of my story. And it's, it's amazing. My husband and I are writing a book right now too. It's coming out in the fall, kind of about our story separately and together. And so um, it's really sweet to be able to speak about how he's been good in all the seasons. This message is sponsored by Greenlight. Okay, if you do go see the Unsung Hero movie, you will be so inspired at how their kids help support their family. And it's just another reminder that as your kids get older, some things about parenting can get easier. Like the support where I the other day said, hey, one of you unload the dishwasher. Can one of you go vacuum upstairs? And there was a miracle that happened and nobody argued with me and they just did it. Yo, this is a big deal. Uh, and, you know, some things aren't as easy. Like when they're not with you and you're trying to figure out how are they going to pay for things? Do they get them a credit card? Well, Thankfully, I had an older brother who helped guide me in knowing the right place to go, and it's Greenlight, because Greenlight is a debit card and a money app that's made for families. What I love is we were able to get an account so each of my four boys could get their own Greenlight card, and on the app, we can transfer money into their account from our parent account. We can see where they spend money, and we can even have an automated 
system where they get an allowance every week and that varies based on their ages, money that automatically just gets moved into their account. Not only does it help them if they are out on their own needing to use uh, the green light card to buy something, it also through the app can teach them how to save, invest, spend wisely with games, which I need to go on there more with my boys. There's, like I mentioned, the allowance option, but you can even have a chores feature where you set up chores either one time or recurring that then when they complete them, it goes into their account. So millions of parents and kids are learning more about money on Greenlight. It's easy and it's convenient. I I can attest. We've been using it for years to help raise financially smart kids and navigate life together. It's so helpful to get all on the same page through the app. So my husband and I, we can see where our kids are spending money. We can transfer money when needed in the moment. So sign up for Greenlight today. Get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash DMA. That's greenlight.com slash DMA to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash DMA. You all know me by now, and you know that I'm the type of person that I'm trying to make the right decisions for my family and for myself and taking care of myself. One way I've been doing that is trying to help my hair stay healthy, and I have been using the Vegamore products. One, they have clean ingredients, which you all know I'm all about. They give me visibly healthy hair, and I've heard Scalp is really important, a really healthy scalp. So with Vegamore, I'm starting to see visibly thicker, fuller, shinier hair without the harsh ingredients. So uh, they have my signature favorite color, which is pink. Every cute pink bottle of Vegamore, they are 100% cruelty-free. They're never formulated with any harmful chemicals, parabens, hormones. And uh, I've been loving, well, one, of course, their Grow Serum, Uh, which is fantastic. After I've washed my hair, I put it in before I put in other products and dry it. I also took the Vegamore dry shampoo with me on my latest trips and it works fantastic. It was great. My hair stayed uh, looking good throughout the days when I wasn't washing it. What's even better is they have value kits. You can get a Grow Essentials kit where you can try more than just one product and you save money when you do. And you can also save money when you get a monthly subscription so you don't run low on their products. And the key is consistency. So making sure with that Grow Hair Serum, I do it every day to keep my hair and scalp flourishing. Uh, Did you know that Vegamore sells one bottle of Grow Serum every 15 seconds on their website? That's how good this stuff is. So give your hair the power of a little pink bottle with Vegamore. For a limited time, Don't Mom Alone listeners get 20% off their first order by going to vegamore.com slash DMA. Use the code DMA at checkout. That's vegamore, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash DMA, code DMA to save 20% on your first order. V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash DMA, code DMA. That's a lot, Rebecca. That's a lot. Yeah. It's the the concerts, the movie promotion cuz you're you ha- you're a flight attendant in the movie, but you're promoting it as part of the family and it's about you. Um and then you've got a book, I mean. That's a lot. Yes. Well, when I talk about healthy yeses and healthy noes, <laughs> this is like a lot of what my husband and I talk about right now and it's like is that a is that a good thing? Is that a a, a thing where our family can thrive in that? And we're homeschooling so that family can come with. And Well, that's, yeah, that's a really important thing to point mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a line that everyone's repeating that's part of the film. The family isn't in the way. The family is the way. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I felt the tug of like, do I need, need to stop doing this so that I can be a mom full time? And I met um, a writer, Trisha Goyer, and she was like, I just invite my kids into the process. If she yes. was writing a novel, she would ask them, I have this character and what do you think I should name it? Or this complex. Wow. And that concept, I was like, oh, <laughs> this isn't a separate thing. That's a little box that I don't, I keep my kids out of it and yeah. they're better for it. And I can see that like my boys knowing that I even do, I mean, my mic, we're in the middle of my house. Like they know. So I'll find my 12 year old recording his own little song on GarageBand because it's still up. But I just think, 
it doesn't have to be separate and your story becomes the basement, like the foundation for their story or your whatever, your roof is their floor. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, the ceiling, yes. Yeah, yeah. your ceiling is their floor, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we see that from the start of this film Mm -hmm. is like your dad has um, one of the boys on his hip and he's introducing Amy Grant or whatever. I mean, it's like y'all were invited and then you now. So how do you involve your kids in your process? Yeah, sometimes it makes sense for the whole family to come to a show. Sometimes it makes sense for just me to go because I'm going to be gone for one day. Yeah. Sometimes it makes sense for one of the girls to come with me. So we have a 10 year old, five year old girls, and then River is three, our son. And so I can kind of take them, like I'm going to do like a movie promotion event, you know, this weekend, and our five year old's coming with me, you know? And so it's really sweet to have that kind of mother daughter time. Um, and then daddy gets kind of special time with the kids if I'm gone too, you know, so it's kind of like tag teaming, it really <laughs> mama by mama, just going good. Okay. How, you know, how are we going to work this? And it je- definitely is an adventure. It's a different life. And there was a point where I think, you know, we had some curveballs. We were going through the miscarriage season. My husband had lost his job unexpectedly. There was a lot of like challenges in that time. And I, I remember just us feeling like, okay, we've got to dial it back. We've got to like, we just got to live this kind of private small life because we're so bamboozled by what's happened in our lives. We just can't cope with it. And maybe we're called to kind of live this just real private kind of away life. And when God called me back to music, it was like, Okay, no. When we when we first got married, when we were even engaged, we knew that we were called to a really different kind of radical life. Like it was just going to be not very normal. And when he, when he called us back to it, there was this fresh commitment of, okay, we are called to this kind of risky, adventurous life with Jesus. And I would dare to say that every every Christian family is called to a unique adventure. It's going to look different. We can't compare. And honestly, in an in a Instagram, kind of Facebook, social media world, I think we can do that way too easily and go, okay, that looks good. I should be like that. But no, I think we should be going, okay, God, what is the unique adventure that you have our family on? And it's going to look different to anybody else's. And so for us, ours, ours is highly unusual, but we know he's in it and we just see his hand and we see how he's meeting us. And we see even the grace on our kids. Like our season is crazy right now with this movie. It is insane. Um, And and we're telling the kids, okay, it's going to slow down here in a little bit and and it will, but there's grace for it because I think they see us being faithful to the mission that God has for us. And my mom said something strategic a couple of years ago. She said, if you and Cubby are being faithful to what God's having you do, then there's blessing on your kids there's a blessing on them as well in your faithfulness. And that really resonated with me because healthy yeses that are being led by the Holy Spirit for us as husband and wives are also a gift to our children because they see us like honoring Jesus first. Yeah, I think that what can often happen is families think, oh, this is the formula. We all sign up for 18 month old soccer. And then we all do this and we all go to this school and we all like, we lived in these very recipe yep. form yep. boxes. It's and it's kind, like, of, kind of, yep. Yes. And it's like, God does have something unique. Yes. Your husband's personality, yours, or if you're a single mom, like that doesn't discount you from the good things God has for your family. And when we settle to these cookie cutter lives, it's like, we're missing out on the miracles. We're missing out on the ways that it may not be easy. And I think that's the key. It's not saying it's easy, breezy, beautiful no. or predictable. No, no. And it's interesting because our pastor, you know, here, here in Nashville, he, he's when he watched the movie, he said, if you want to see a miracle, need one. Mm. And I think sometimes we're scared to kind of need one. We're, we're scared to kind of ask God for the the more radical, you know, needs of our of our hearts or of our lives or we're scared to kind of risk and it was interesting I, I heard a study that was done of these like 90 year olds years ago and they asked like what are the top three things that you would do differently in your life and and one of them one of those top three things that these 90 year olds said and reflecting on their lives they said they would have taken more risks mm. and i think with the creator of the universe leading us 
I think we can safely do that because we know he's got us. And when we know he's leading us, then we can rest in that. And I, and I just pray people walk from the movie with that, Heather, like that, that truth that like, just, just look to God as the great adventure leader and, and what, watch what he's going to do in your family. Well, and I, before we go, one more thing that I wanted to touch on was the power of community in this film. Oh yeah. The role of Kay, Candace plays. Mm-hmm that piece and how in the film, I don't know if it happened in real life, how your dad got to the point where he just felt some shame about needing people and needing people's help. I don't feel like whether that was true for your dad or not. I think that's a I common. Think it really was. Yeah. I think, I it I think it's a really common. Really yes. Yes. I think it would be common. Like it's a common, people. like we don't want to need people. Like yeah. I don't want to have to be in a place where I need your it's help. Humbling. It's humbling. Yes. But mm-hmm. I think the joy that you saw in the people's faces who were helping, it's like, so as you're journeying and as you're making these choices and you're heading back into your musical career, how do you not mom alone? Like as maybe you're mm-hmm. taking one kid and you you have your family unit with you and Nash, are you with them near them? Yeah. All my, all my family of origin is spread out around that, the Nashville area. Yeah. Yeah. So who, what, what are your tips on not momming alone mm-hmm. and this season? Mm-hmm. Well, I think, you know, in the 10 years that I've, we've been like parenting, our church family obviously has been huge in just even seeing what they're learning, like just at Sunday school and what they come back with. I mean, that that's just huge that it's backing up what we're saying at home. Um, our daughter has been involved with the homeschool tutorial. That, that has been like fantastic. Just friends. I think I, I, I'm in a season two of just really noticing who especially our 10 year old is choosing as friends, like that that's a really important component. Um, them seeing that I have healthy kind of mom relationships too, and that, that I'm connected and not just kind of, yeah, out there just braving it by myself. I, I'm, I'm, I am super relational. I know, I, I know I need that, but I, every mom needs that is the point. Like none of us were meant or built to be, just out there getting this mom thing right by ourselves. Like we have to have it. I have a, I have a mom, like a homeschool mom kind of informal group that we we gather probably once a month and we just talk about everything. Right. Like, and it's just beautiful because the grace in that and the, the years of life that we've done together now is just so incredible and such a gift to me. So I, I love that your, your podcast is titled that don't mom alone, because we just cannot do it alone and we need each other and we need the church. And the film shows that too. Like people in the church found out we didn't have any furniture, truckloads of furniture at our house, you know, groceries on the doorstep. Kay was actually the person that, that brought groceries, um, at one point. I mean, there was checks in the mail, Holy Spirit led just thing after thing after thing where we just saw the church come around us. Um, Christmas presents, that was another one. I mean, just huge stuff where God just saw our family, but he met the needs through the church and we need each other. Yeah. And so y'all, if you're the one who's in need, being okay, asking for help. And then if you see a need, you know, stepping up into that. Well, thank you, Rebecca, so much for being with me. Thank oh my you. goodness. Such I a joy. It. Yes. I it. Thanks such for having a me fan of and all, the, oh, all the small bones. A plus in my mind. So thanks so much, friend. Good to be with you. If you haven't already, I hope you make plans this weekend for Mother's Day to go see Unsung Hero. Maybe you have a husband or kids that are like, oh, mom, I don't want to go see a Christian movie. Well, I'll tell you what. This is so well done. It is so well done and so encouraging. And I don't know if it's because I've met Luke and Joel and I know they're amazing people, or I've heard through Helen this story before, but it was so great to see it just unfold on the big screen. And I love the aspect of community coming around them and just the, like I mentioned in this episode, the spiritual disciplines. It's so great. Make sure you go see it. Um, Also, I just want you to think through as a family. Uh, Our Megan, my VA, she wrote some good discussion questions like, how can you invite your kids into your things that you love, your job, your skills, your talents. How could, instead of you compartmentalizing kid things versus adult things, how can you all integrate those? Uh, Thinking about that this week, asking God to open your eyes to see that. Uh, Also, have your kids seen you vulnerable? Are you able to show them some of the things you're holding that are hard? Okay, 
I'm going to pray for us. Here we go. Lord, I thank you that your testimony, the testimony of your faithfulness has been displayed on big screens and that more and more people are getting to see the goodness of who you are and your glory through the small bone story. But Lord, I pray for a person listening right now who is overwhelmed financially, who is feeling desperate, who is in a season of waiting, who is longing for hope. I pray, Lord, that we would be people who come to you, that we would surrender in our pleases. Lord, please heal. Lord, please provide. Lord, please give wisdom. Lord, please direct. And then we would be people of thank yous. Lord, thank you for how we've seen you move already. Lord, thank you how you brought this friend at the exact right time. Lord, thank you for how we're seeing glimpses of hope and growth in this child. And that we can offer both to you, God, our pleases and our thank yous as offerings that show our need for you. I pray, Lord, for those in seasons of long waiting, that they would get glimmers of hope, that they would see your hand in some way today. I pray, Lord, for those in hospital rooms, those waiting results, those who are waiting for that next season or change, be their ever-present comfort. I thank you, God, for this space that we can get encouragement and reminders of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have been so sweet to reach out to me. Thank you for sharing on uh, your socials, episodes you love. It's been such an encouragement to me. I know it's a busy time, but I hope that you are getting little little bits of um, rest and encouragement where you can. And um, yeah, praying for you as you celebrate Mother's Day, whatever that looks like, the hard, the good, um, that you see oftentimes moms are the unsung hero, but you are the hero to your family. You matter more than you know. Thanks for joining me on here. Adios. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more people and more resources to help remind you that you're not alone, head over to don'tmomalone.com. That's where you'll also find show notes with any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I want you to know the good news, the great news that you're not alone because God has promised to always be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again, Jesus said when he left, he was going to leave a helper, a comforter to be with us. God in us, moms, that's superpower. So while you're washing dishes at your kitchen sink, while you're driving to and from work, while you're feeding that baby late into the night, while you're cleaning sticky floors, God promises to be just as present with you as when you're worshiping in a church pew. As it says in Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Now that's good news. Have a great day.